Now I'd, I'd like to introduce our featured speaker, um, Mayor Rawlings. Elected in two, June 2011, Mayor Rawlings has many accomplishments and has taken a very hands-on approach to leading our city. Among his many accomplishments are the launch of Grow South, a comprehensive strategy designed to boost the economic impact of Southern Dallas, committing to improving Dallas Independent School District, forming the Mayor's Business Arts Initiative to draw corporate participation in the largest urban arts district in the U.S., together with our city council approving a budget that improves infrastructure uh, and basic services without increasing the tax burden on homeowners here, here, presiding over the passage of 600 million in new city bonds to fund streets, flood, flood protection, and economic development in initiatives. Mike came to Dallas in 1976 from Boston um, with $200 in his pocket and proved Dallas is truly the city of opportunity. He grew to lead Tracy Lock Corporation, uh, the advertising agency, and the helm of uh, Pizza Hut, and grew that company to record sales. Please welcome our transformational leader, our Mayor Mike Rawlings. Thank you, and good morning. Thank you, Ken, for that. Uh, I'm with you. It's good to sense that optimism. I like the last slide that said Dallas will outpace the nation in the coming years, and uh, I just want to take credit for that, okay? <laughs> I'm the mayor of Dallas, so it's just kind of obvious. <laughs> uh, but it is good to be uh, talking about growth as opposed to kind of ratcheting down um, in, in a recession. I want to talk a little bit about my view of what um, Ken just talked about where I see it on the ground here in the Dallas area and talk about some of the challenges I see as uh, we're coming forward. I think the headline is I'm very, very bullish about the growth in the next uh, uh, five to ten years. I'm not so bullish beyond that and uh, I will tell you why because we've got some serious challenges in front of us. But I think uh, we're, we are on a, uh, a wonderful run. You know, when you talk about Dallas, especially when you talk about economists or statisticians, they don't know where Dallas is. Um, they, because uh, there's uh, the, Dal the D Dallas Fort Worth area, there's the Dallas area, which sometimes includes Collin County, and then there's the city of Dallas. And all those things are important and, uh, frankly, um, more important for statisticians and less important for citizens because, and visitors because I think everybody just sees this as Dallas. Uh, and they um, kind of move from one place to another. Uh, I believe I live in this city called DFW, and we've got this neighborhood called Dallas. But I brag on the Eamon Carter and brag on Jerry World every chance I get because I think that's the way human beings are, are living. At the DFW level, uh, one st uh, stat that uh, wasn't talked about was the news that w just came out that DFW provided more job growth in 2014 than in any market in the United States. I mean, it is phenomenal that we beat everybody as far as job growth is concerned, consistent with some of those Texas numbers. DFW people do not know, okay, so I'm just telling you guys, so you can use this uh, uh, bit of fact, they just don't understand it, is the fourth largest market in the United States. You've got the New York area, you've got Los Angeles area, you've got Chicagoland, and you have DFW. We are the fastest growing. We will be uh, bigger than Chicagoland, I think, sometime in the 2020s. Uh, because of that growth rate and because of what we're doing. DFW is doing that for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons is our, 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 our most important uh, port, and that is our DFW airport. Um, DFW is the third largest, excuse me, third busiest airport in the, in the world, in the world, B between all the passenger and cargo um, uh, flights that come in. Uh, it is one of the largest, I think it is the largest as well, being bigger than the island of Manhattan. It's an old trivia question that you can give in cocktail parties and people won't believe it uh, when you do that. And we are continuing to invest in it. I apologize, the, 
the, the mess at, at Terminal A, but we will um, continue to, um, uh, to make it uh, first class and good. We've got a dart line now running nonstop from downtown to, to DFW. In the last three years, we've had over 20 new international flights nonstop um, we, from, uh, from Australia, from uh, Korea. Um, uh, we've got one of the only cities that have all three of the Gulf state carriers coming in nonstop. Um, we've got A380s from Emirates and uh, from Qantas. We have started non-stops to, uh, to Shanghai uh, and to Hong Kong for the first time. Huge news for this area, huge news. And in June uh, to Beijing. It is uh, phenomenal what that airport is doing. Now the Dallas area, part of it, uh, the kind of the big brother in that partnership is doing very well as, as well as you know the growth that's taking place um, in Plano with, uh, with Toyota coming. That was a, one of the most seminal uh, new uh, businesses coming here for so many reasons. Um, and I think we'll, we see bit new businesses following. I'm talking to, to folks all the time, a lot of them in California, about uh, uh, why this is a better place. I do believe there's, uh, we are the headquarters for global companies for their North American headquarters. Does that make sense? Okay, so, you know, Toyota is a good example. Toyota, met Chairman Toyota in uh, Nagoya, and they were so excited that uh, their whole North American headquarters are gonna be based here, as, as Ericsson is from a lot of European companies. They've chosen uh, this as the location. Uh, we've got the land uh, up north, and uh, we will uh, continue to grow, I believe. Now, I do believe that people at some point don't want to live in Ardmore, Oklahoma, and, and <laughs> commute to Dallas. And that is one of the reasons that Dallas is uh, continuing to grow as well. Uh, just some facts so you'll understand. We've had, uh, we were the first, I'm sorry, the last to go into the recession and the first to come out. We've had 48 months of, of I'm a retailer, a business guy, a same store sales growth uh, consistently. And uh, Dallas, um, uh, I think this last year it was a four, per, uh, so, excuse me, it was a 6%. Our sales tax revenues grew by 6%. And we are making sure that uh, retail uh, vacancies are at all time low since 2006 which is a, uh, an important metric. We are, making, uh, we are looking at employment uh, very closely. We're up 5% in, in, uh, in employment, and property values um, tracked again at 4% growth. Home values are hot, um, and it is, uh, my son bought a little starter home down in Oak Cliff. Um, his uh, grandmother passed, and he got a little money, and he said, Dad, I'm gonna invest it in real estate. And he bought it for seventy-five thousand. Is getting offers for one hundred and fifty thousand, and he's so excited. He said, "Dad, I'm going to sell it. Okay, I'm going to take this money." And I said, "Great. And where are you going to live?" And <laughs> he goes, "Oh, I hadn't thought about that. You know, because everything is rising around it. Once he kind of figured out that uh, um, that <laughs> what is happening. Now, there's a lot of reasons uh, why uh, this is true." One of the reasons is uh, the uh, mayor and city council before me and through my time uh, focused on crime and making sure we were the safest big city in America. We're not quite there yet, we're pretty damn close. But let me tell you what's happened. 11 years in a row, crime is down. We have dropped crime more than any big city um, in, a, in, in America, uh, over 56%. Uh, our homicide rate is the lowest since 1938, okay? It's phenomenal what has happened. We've spent a lot of tax dollars making sure that we had enough officers on the streets, and it is starting to pay off for us. I think that uh, uh, people feel safe. It's kind of the first level of Maslow's hierarchy, and that's how econo uh, economic growth happens 
uh, besides that. There is a sense of optimism, though, and a sense of uh, well-being in this city. We, we measure our citizens every year. And uh, this last year, you saw the kind of the, the national average on a lot of things, you know, city perf government performance, parks, um, you know, how you feel about life. Uh, and uh, you saw this level. And Dallas was always five points higher. It was always five on, on almost every metric that was out there. And I believe that um, uh, cit uh, citizens kind of sense that uh, this is a hell of a place to live. Now, a lot of it is because we live someplace else, OK? And we came here. Uh, show of hands, how many people were born and raised in Dallas? OK, a little bit more than I usually get. I would say that's probably about 25%, 20-25%, all right? But for the record, that's you know 75 80% of us didn't. And usually, I get about 10 to 15% of people that were born and raised here, because we're all outsiders. And we came here because I feel that we think it's a city of opportunity. And when I, I became mayor in, in 2011, I did a, 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 a survey, asked the citizens of Dallas this question, then asked the United States the question, are the best days ahead of us or behind us? In the United States, it was 45% said the best days are ahead of us, 44% said the best days behind us. In Dallas, it was 65% felt the best days are ahead of us, and only 15% felt the best days behind us. Uh, um, amongst minorities, they were more optimistic than Anglos. And there was a real sense that, that this place I'm living at is a lot better than where I, I was living before. And so I think that's another reason why um, uh, we're, we're continuing to grow. We've got some structural uh, opportunities uh, that I think are good. I'm not, I am not as worried about uh, um, the energy, the, the price of uh, oil here being mayor, as an investor I am. You know, you lose a little money there. But, but as in Dallas, we are, as you saw the, the, the pie chart, we are so diversified <coughs> that we can weather these things. And I think that's one of the reasons we were the last to come, uh, go into the recession and first to come out. I'm a big believer in our medical um, uh, facilities and and uh, what is happening in medical services. Um, it, you, you can brag on this fact, too. Uh, we're the only city with a hospital that has had six Nobel Prize winners with UT Southwestern. Six Nobel Prize winners. And these folks have come here for all those same reasons that I just talked about. And we've got a great healthcare system, and we've got so many businesses around uh, supporting that. Logistics are important. Um, in southern, far southern Dallas, uh, the warehouses um, are, are being built. A, a lot of you probably were involved in that, and they are coming up. Those goods and services are going to be coming up from the Panama Canal up Houston, up 45, and throughout the United States. So we're becoming a logistics hub that uh, I think as time is, uh, is, is come to, to be able to do that. Uh, finance, you know, when I was uh, here in the... Uh, in the early 80s, we were almost a money sitter, uh, a money sitter bank city, and we lost that. The kind of everything blew up, and uh, and and it kind of went away to the coast. It's come back. I'm not. Uh, banks are different today, but the amount of capital that is in this city, hedge funds, private equity, uh, the real estate funds, uh, family funds is remarkable and is attracting a lot of the professionals because they realize they can make good money and at the same time um, uh, live here. Those are kind of just three of many. There's all the services you you saw about as uh, you saw up there as well. So I think there's um, it's it's great to see that, uh, and I believe uh, we can kind of continue that growth. As I said. Um, to, as a business person, you've got to continue to think about how you're going to grow as a city. And one of the things for me that I realized is that uh, downtown was, gonna, was, was almost at the tipping point and was going to get on the other side. It is now. Um, the, the retail space, uh, I'm excuse me, the vacancies, 
the, the building ownerships, money's coming back into downtown in a significant way, and uh, we're going to have pretty close uh, to 10,000 residents pretty soon living in the downtown area. I'm not even talking about uptown. Uptown just is, is phenomenal, what's going, been going on there. But I felt, it's like, where do we get our big growth? And to me, it's in southern Dallas. Let me explain why. So you have the, the, the Dallas uh, uh, kind of oblong uh, clock, if you will, from about 10 o'clock uh, on that uh, clock, uh, which is the Trinity River on the west, around to 3 o'clock, which is I-30 on the east. A lot of people don't ever go over the river or go south of 30, OK? It's 60% of our land mass. You can fit the city of Atlanta inside southern Dallas. You can, uh, San Francisco is one-fourth the size of southern Dallas. Forget about North Dallas. Forget about downtown and North Dallas. And it is only 15% of our tax base. Now, you, you, you probably have all seen statistics and say, I'll tell you why. But it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, I think southern Dallas is the greatest um, uh, investment opportunity that we have. It's not a charity case. It's an investment opportunity. I don't know. Many of you know this guy, so I won't embarrass him to tell the story. But uh, um, he, he built the new Walmart down at Glen Oaks, put $400,000 of his own money into that thing. It's now worth $16 million. Created 325 jobs. He's having an add-on where he's getting all the retailers to come in. My old company, Pizza Hut, is there uh, and uh, going to be there. And he's going to add another 200 jobs there. The opportunity is so, so what Phil Romano et al. did at Trinity Groves, nobody ever thought you could go on the side of the river and create something like that. The market's there, and it sucks it up as quick as you can do it. So I have been focused on that, have got a plan called Grow South that I won't bore you with this morning. But one of the ideas is to, is to figure out how we take private investment money and move it in an organized and more efficient fact, uh, um, uh, uh, way to uh, southern Dallas. And we're making huge headway on that. So I believe southern Dallas is a great opportunity. What are my fears? Well, the, the big fear is we are getting bigger. Traffic is, 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 uh, is going to be huge, uh, a huge issue. You can't get every place in this city now in 15 minutes, all right? Used to, that was just kind of my belief I could get any place. If I rushed, I could get to the airport in 15 minutes. You can't do that anymore. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I love Field is so successful. With the right amendment coming up, uh, uh, up, you know, everybody wants to get, they don't want to drive uh, so far. Another fact, by the way, that we're, uh, passenger um, uh, traffic is up at DFW, even though it has blown the roofs off at, at Love Field. And so we've been able to kind of do both. So traffic is a big issue. It's a big issue in Austin as we start to kind of think about that. And we don't want to overbuild highways. I'm not a, I don't wake up in the morning and go, wow, let's get another highway. But we've got to figure out how we keep ourselves more mobile. One of the things that did go down in that, in that citizen, review, uh, citizen survey was mobility. They felt that they were sitting uh, more time in traffic jams. And th that is, I do believe there's a p piece of, uh, there's silver lining in that cloud where you, uh, everybody kind of expands. And then pretty soon, because they don't want to drive so far, people are starting to move back um, in places like the uptown and other places. The other thing that worries me, um, uh, besides, excuse me, I should touch on water. Water is a big long-term issue for us. James Mitchell said water, not oil, is the lifeblood of Texas. And I think he, he, he spoke well on that. And ultimately, the planning uh, on that issue is, it's more long-term, but it is a very serious issue if we don't deal with that. The thing that does concern me as I look out in the, uh, the, the beyond the, this decade is our economic gap between the haves and the have-nots. I'm not about to turn into a preacher. I'm a business person, OK? But you cannot have one of the richest cities in the world. We, I think we've got 
15 or 16 billionaires, okay, in this city. And ladies and gentlemen, we are the number one city for kids living in poverty. We beat Detroit and Philadelphia. The Pippa Ray. Is that amazing that Dallas, Texas has more it's like 38% of our children grow up at the poverty level or beneath. Now, why is that bad? Not only is it heartbreaking that a lot of these kids literally don't have beds at night, okay? But what's that meaning for education? We've got this huge economic gap, and it, 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 it is, correlates almost 100% to our education gap. It's predictive what is going to be happening to those kids. Only one out of 10 of our children get out of DISD, college ready, according to ACT and SAT. More go to college than that, okay? But only one out of 10 end up matriculating with two or four years. That means 90%, we've got 160,000 kids in, in the Dallas Independent School District. 90% of those kids, as they go through, maybe can get a job in a low industry wage situation. It's a very scary proposition. And until we take this seriously, that this is a train wreck coming at us, the money that we're going to be spending in North Dallas and Southern Dallas is going to flatten out and go this other direction. It's a big, big issue facing the United States. And, but I don't care about the United States so much. I'm caring about my own backyard, and that's why I'm, I'm continued to focus on it. So I, I think this is a, is a major issue, and I can spend t more time talking about that and what we need to do to do it, uh, to, uh, to change this. But I will say that the cities in Texas have been the main drivers of Texas. For the first time, we're 51 percent uh, DFW in Houston, and 51 percent of the population. People are coming to the cities. Yes, they've got their ranch, they've got their place. They, this is where the jobs are. And we've got to have Texas policies that support the cities and make sure we continue the quality of life for citizens to attract it, uh, to, to, to attract them here. And so as we look at this legislative session and beyond, making sure we have a, the right strategy for our cities is, is critical. I am very pumped up. I think we'll, we can power through those things. But I, I've decided I'm going to be a bit John the Baptist about this education thing because we have all either got our kids in private schools um, you know, or the kids have graduated. And we go, God, I don't have to deal with that anymore. <laughs> I remember that. It was like the happiest day of your life that you don't have to deal with kids in school anymore. But you do have to deal with kids in school. Okay? They're the kids down the street. They're kids two miles away that are going to impact your life. And so I, I think it's imperative for, for each of us to get involved in, in, in school district races, in policies around this to make sure we continue to reform and challenge our schools. If you know a legislature, talk about schools, because they don't want to, man. It's a third rail. It's somehow. They don't know what to do with it. Is, is it. Am I being too democratic or am I being too, you know, um, Republican? They just don't know how to deal with it. They've got to educate themselves on this issue because a third way has got to be found. But I'm pumped up about this. We will, challenge, we will face those challenges, I, I think, and we will get through this. Uh, I believe Texas is the, the greatest state in the United States. But uh, I'll tell you, uh, as, as we go, we need to be very thoughtful as opposed to just running off cliffs. Thank you very much. Yeah. Five minutes. Yes, sir. Um, I've always believed that in order to pull people out of poverty, you needed economic growth. Yes, you do. We've had this great economic growth in Dallas and in Texas at large. I'm curious what's happened to this gap that you just described over the last 15 years. Has it gotten worse? Has it gotten oh, better? Much worse, much worse. So, so Dallas population went up 5%, and our percent population in poverty went up 40, is up, up 
42 percent. Okay, it went up 42 percent. The reason why, okay, because we've had this economic growth. We're attracting Ericsson and Toyota and AT&T. And guess what they want? They want smart, young men and women to fill those jobs. I just had a ribbon cutting at a business uh, that is hiring 1,000 new people downtown, OK, in the, uh, the, IT, uh, the IT and high tech business. And they are not going to get, they're not going to take people that got 950 on the SATs. They're just not going to do it. And it is imperative that we get those scores up and create a college-bound culture. And it, I'll tell you, it's a business issue. It's, it's starting to be a place you sure you've got enough people for me to hire because what they're having to do is now recruit through the nation and bring people in, which just kind of exacerbates a lot of the, the challenges that we have. Uh, economic growth will bring people up. But they've got to be smart enough to grab hold of that ring, okay, and, and, and educated uh, uh, enough. And that's, that's why. There's also an expectation gap with a lot of these poor people. They don't even, they've never heard of Dartmouth, okay? They've never heard of getting a PhD, okay, the potential of a PhD. Because the, the college-bound culture has not been there. And so if mama doesn't tell, if it, in fact, on just the opposite, they say, you need to start supporting the family here because they're so poor, okay, when the kid's in 10th grade and the kid's not worrying about what they're doing, it's, it's, a, it's a real, uh, um, um, you know, hole that they're going to go down. And then what happens, those kids get involved with crime because it's a lot easier to make that money that way, and they end up in prison. We put them in prison. OK, and we cheer ourselves because crime goes down. They come out eight years later, and guess what? They got a big F on their head for felons, and nobody will hire them, and no, there's no place to live. And so it gets worse. And that's why this education thing, to me, is the seminal issue that we face. Yes, sir. I'm not sure I need it. I, I'm sort of shocked that Dallas would even be in the top 10 in terms of poverty particularly given the growth of the economy. How did it get so bad, seemingly so fast? Well, I think uh, we don't know that answer, uh, the que that question. That is the question I've been asking, why? Why? And I, I need to get folks to really study it. There are basically two theories, OK, uh, out there. One is, is partly my theory, is, is that, that Dallas has been such a city of opportunity a lot of poor people came to Dallas to, uh, than other places because they want their, their piece of that economic pie. The bad jobs here can be a little bit better because of the infrastructure, the kids can go to the schools, they, they can do the things, so poor people come here uh, in droves. The second is the, the housing strategy uh, that has taken place it, here versus other large cities in the United, the United States. Larger cities, historically, their housing plans have been regional in nature, OK? And Dallas, it is not. It has been a city of Dallas housing strategy, OK? And so basically, uh, we have uh, gotten more of the, the low-income housing, OK, where it could have been spread throughout North Texas. And you know, mayors in those other places said, no, not for me. Thank you. <laughs> OK, you, you, you keep it. But it ultimately starts to feed on itself once again with that. So there are, those are two theories that I'm, I'm thinking about. Uh, the third th theory is that we have been on one part of town just so worried about making our uh, money ourselves that we haven't put real economic development strategies in place to take advantage of uh, that uh, workforce and that uh, consumer uh, buying power, because, because there's a lot of folks that uh, are out there that we can make money off of, if you will, um, that are not just the poorest of the poor. But it has, uh, has slipped up on us. It's a very, very good question. And hopefully over the next year, I'm going to get a better answer to that. When, yeah. Mr. Mayor, uh, what is your opinion on Highway 345? On I-345? I yes. My opinion doesn't matter, OK? 
because TxDOT said it's, it, it is uh, structurally um, uh, dangerous if we don't uh, do anything to it. They have already decided to repair it, and it will be repaired, okay? So this great belief that we can all take a vote and we knock 345 down is, is just mythology, okay? Now, the question is, should it be? All right, that, that could be a, a, a dinner conversation. Um, I believe that uh, I wouldn't have built it that way, but I think connecting people in southern Dallas with jobs in the north and trying to get us together is an important strategy in the city. And I'm not a fan of, of that going away anytime soon. I am a fan of knocking I-30 down below grade, okay? I-30 divides East Dallas and in, in, in South Dallas proper, that Fair Park area, and that's an artificial barrier that should be, and I've gotten TxDOT to agree as they start to repair 30 and widen it. We're gonna knock that down, deck it over, and I think that's the long-term vision for that. Yes, ma'am. Well, no question. I, those poor people that are coming, are, uh, a, a, a great bulk of them are, uh, are Mexican-Americans, and uh, immigration is there. We've got undocumented, um, we've got, I think it's another 10 points. So Hispanics are 42% of our city, and I think uh, 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 folks that uh, are citizens are 33, something like that percent. Right? And, and so that other delta are undocumented. Uh, the, uh, I'm, look, I'm very pro-Dallas because of our Hispanic community. The, the, the work ethic, the grabbing for economic you know, benefit, um, the amount of, um, of family that they have, the culture, is exactly what you would recruit for if you were building a city. They happen to be poor, okay? And if we don't kind of deal with that issue, they're not going to be educated enough to, to get the jobs of the higher tech, and that's what I'm concerned about, because historically, especially in Mexico, they've been a very anti, stay away from the government, stay away from public entities, because it hasn't worked that well for them. We've got to break that culturally down. I, I think we need to get on with this in this country and have a decent immigration strategy uh, it's just, I'm just so tired of people trying to be right, and ultimately because they're trying to be right, we end up in the wrong place. I mean, just everybody wants to be perfect and be doctrinaire, and, but everybody knows this is an issue. We've got to find a solution to it, and we need to go forward with it. Yeah, the, he asked, the, what about the public school system, which is the root of the issue here, um, we, um, first of all, people say I don't, I don't compliment our public school system. We have got great schools, okay? Let me start with that. Uh, we just don't have enough of them. We've got the number one public uh, high school in America. The number one public high school in America is not in the park cities, okay? It is an Yvonne Yule, talented, gifted in Dallas for Three years in a row, it has been the number one school. Booker T. Washington, the top arts magnet. We, we've got five kids going to Juilliard this last year. For any time in the last, they'd only taken two from any one high school, okay? We've got some fabulous grade schools and some great um, junior highs. But I'll tell you, as you matriculate up, we're not educating those 160,000. I'm, everybody knows that I'm very uh, frustrated with the dysfunctionality at uh, the, uh, the Board of Trustees. And once again, it's sort of like the immigration issue. Everybody wants to be right on some small issue, and they just get so upset with each other they're not moving ahead together as a team. And we've got to reform. We've done some good things. For the first time, we've empowered principals. I know this probably doesn't sound like a big thing to you guys, but no one does it around the countries. Principals can hire their own teachers now, as opposed to getting the teachers thrust at them. That's a huge decision there. And we've got a teacher evaluation program that you're not going to get paid by how long you're there. You're going to get paid by performance. And that is a major change. 
And so there are some things that we've powered through, thank God to some of the, uh, for some of these trustees, that I think are going to make our city better uh, in, in our school district. But we've got a long road to go. For the first time, we are outpacing um, um, the rest of the nation and other big cities on the amount of kids, uh, minority kids, uh, enrolling and passing AP tests. It's huge to, to show that we can do that. Um, and uh, I think that uh, there are other programs on their way that there's signs of life. But ultimately, it'll, we'll know this fall once the, uh, the tests come back. Uh, it's, it's all about college ready. I mean, that's where we're going. I mean, everybody doesn't like to, to use that number, but SAT and ACT stories have got to go up. And it just, uh, that's just a matter of hard work. One more? The, the, uh, the high-speed rail to Houston is going to happen first because just the, um, uh, the time to complete the, the Trinity Parkway is going to take a little longer. Um, I would probably, if I had to bet on actually what is going to get done, okay, I would probably bet on the parkway a little bit over the, than the high-speed rail. Uh, high-speed rail, though, if I was handicapping it, um, I would say right now it's 70-30 that it's going to happen. Uh, I, I started with like a 20%. Um, I, uh, some, some stuff happened. I went up to 40%. I went to Japan. I wrote it. I talked to the Japanese bank uh, that is a third of the debt in the, in the company that is providing all the train sets and the technology for it, which is fabulous, state of the art. We couldn't choose anybody better. And now I'm up, you know, I'm up into that you know, 60, 70 percent chance. There's still some hurdles to get over, but they're not government hurdles. They're, they're really, uh, ra you know, raising the debt that they need and, and, and the like and that sort of stuff. I, I assume everybody saw where that's going to end up. It's uh, going to be right uh, uh, in southern Dallas, okay, south of 30, and, uh, and it'll come right up that way. And I hopefully it'll come, uh, we'll create a, uh, a train platform that that decks 30, okay, and um, right south of downtown, so we'll have a kind of a Clyde Warren Park situation like that. The, the parkway is a, is a, is a longer um, uh, discussion, but, um, you know, we voted for it twice. I've had p designers here working on it. I think we're going to get something that uh, citizens are going to not only um, uh, like, but complain about why did it take us so long to get it there eventually. So, I'd like to thank the mayor. I promised I'd get him out of here before my. I tried. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Good to see you. Thank you.